All right, so we're going to work with the terrain splat map this time, specifically with the height map. When we get, how do we take any particular point on the splat map and get the associated height so that we can determine a value of what color or layer to place on it based on that height? Um, it's a pretty simple system, uh, but let me go ahead and show you the general nature of it. Uh, so in this one, I'm using four layers. Uh, I'm using a blue layer, a green layer, a gray layer, and a white layer. Blue for water, green for grass, gray for rock, and white for snow caps. That seems like a fairly, that, that's kind of a way to make this island look a little more natural. Even though it's very low resolution right now, very choppy, and it's just straight colors at the moment, and there's no real painting, shadowing textures, uh, you are uh, post-processing, anything like that. All right, so here's the code. Uh, in order to apply it, uh, remember in the previous video we discussed actually setting the uh, slope values like we do over here, the splat maps, or sorry, splat values. Um, and uh, so the key thing here is how do we get the height? Well, I'm taking our XY position and I'm basically converting them into percentages. How far of a percent are we across the terrain? because that percentage is going to match up for the terrain height map. It's meaningful to that one, it's meaningful to the splat map, and I believe there was another one, like oh, the holes map as well. Okay, so to get the height, we're effectively going to the tool mesh and we're getting the nearest integer. When, you say, when I say integer, that is because we are taking the height res. The height res is 129 right now. Um, so we're taking our percentage, we're multiplying it by that, so it's basically 0 times 129, 1 times 109, 0.5 times 129, and it rounds it to the nearest integer, and that finds the nearest x or y coordinate position on our mesh. Now, it's the nearest, it's not exact. So um, that's one key thing to keep in mind, that you, this is not a pixel perfect system. In fact, when we look at this, if I pause this, well, whatever, I'll explain some of the details on that in a minute. I just want to give you the code to, uh, as close as we can. Um, right now, our code, our layers, when the layers are running, like this painter layer, um, the height map on the actual terrain object has not been set. That's the way this was designed to work, so that all the processing can happen against our arrays of data before it actually gets passed back. Um, and that ends up, that can save us a little bit of performance. Okay, uh, because they might be doing their own checks, they're gonna be doing their own copies, and we don't need to transfer and deal with all of that data all the time. Um, anyway, so we've got the data that we're working with in the mesh. Now, uh, terrain has something similar where you just say terrain.sample height, and that gets you the perfect height for that position. Uh, works much better, but we haven't pushed the data yet. So uh, we're just rounding it to the nearest int, which gives us the nearest vertice, and that is the height we're using here. Okay, so we've got that height, uh, that height which is currently in a 0 to 1. Um, 0 to 1, it's a percentage it's returning. So we are going to multiply that by the terrain data height map scale. So the height map scale dot y, uh, that is telling us how high that gets altogether, which by default is 1,000 meters. So it's from 0 to 1,000. This y will return 1,000. So we're multiplying our mesh times 1,000. So if we have 0.16, that's going to be 160 meters up. Uh, once it gets to here. Now there is also one more chance that our terrain is not starting off at zero. If our offset is set to something else, for instance you want a sea level of zero so you drop your terrain even lower, uh, then this makes a lot, then you end up wanting to take into account the offset of the terrain as well. So this deals with that. Now, if your terrain is not dropping below zero and you're setting your low, your, your offset of your terrain to zero, you can omit this part. Uh, you don't need it. And also, if you don't care about real-world positioning of the height, which I find much easier to work with, where you just say, at 18 meters, this is what it is. At 8, 20 meters, this is what it is. Or you have an actual point in the system, uh, and then you use its transform to get its y and say, at this height, at this particular empty game object point, um, this is where the color changes from water to sand, or from sand to rock, or rock to snow, or whatever it might be.
Okay, so that's how we get our height. And effectively, we're just going through this list right here, the elements, and saying, are we less than this height? So starting from the first one, are we less than 17.5? If we are, then... Uh, if we are, then use whatever layer we're on minus one. So we're looking, we're starting from one. Uh, so we never get that zero index. And we're basically saying, so the first one pass through on this is going to say, hey, if the current height that we found is less than 17.5 for the terrain, then use uh, our layer one minus one. So it ends up being layer zero, which is element zero, layer zero. Uh, and then over here on the terrain, we get water. Okay. Uh, now, this particular math does not give us the peak height. This only tells us when something is lower. So I'm also putting in a Boolean used topology equals false. Uh, and if the u so we set it to false right away. And if we've actually set the value, then we mark that we've used the topology. And we set it to true. Once this for and we break out of the statement to the, the for loop at the same time. Once we've broken out of the for loop, we check to see if we've actually used the topology. If we haven't, because it went all through the heights and did, never found one lower than the value that it was checking, uh, then we're going to set it to the last layer that we have. So whatever the last layer is, that's what goes here. All right. Um, OK, so that's effectively how we're getting the values in here. I've also done another thing, just a minor thing here, where if, uh, instead of using uh, tool.terraindata.alphamapwidth, which I was setting directly here in the splat map, and I was also using over here, um, I had to use it a lot. So I, was I decided to switch it to max y, max x and max y, because quite honestly, height is a known element inside of terrain. We know what height means. It's how high it is. Except when you're talking to the splat map, that is not the case. So the height, the, the term height is being used in multiple contexts. Of course, so is X, Y, and Z. They're all being switched around. And I, I kind of wish uh, uh, the terrain system would just do away with the use of height and width altogether. And so anytime we're referring to Y, that's the height. Anytime we're referring to X and Z, that is the, that is the Cartesian surface. I think that would make the math, the code a heck of a lot easier and make it so we don't have to do transforms on this stuff to uh, figure it out. Um, so if there's another terrain that comes out for this, I'd love to see that as a part of it. Okay, uh, that's, I think, some of the key things in here. Uh, I do recommend that you don't, that you don't use this as a model of what you should hand off to designers. Um, this particular setup this is not clean. If I add a new terrain layer or I change one of these and I decide, OK, I want to have water. I, I don't need the rock anymore. I'm just going to get rid of it. So I delete that layer. Now, that's certainly something I could do. Um, our code is not going to work anymore. I suddenly have to go back to these other areas and change their meaning here. What I would normally do is I would create a system where the designer can design out what the terrain layers are, and then my code will go to what those layers are supposed to be and reproduce it for this terrain, including literally just producing custom terrain layer elements, saving it to the file system, and deleting the old ones. Uh, I, I would end up doing it along those lines so that the designer has a much more free way of managing this. Because currently, if they change one section, they have to run around and go change another. We should have a, a central point uh, of stuff here. But I'm not trying to teach tools here, uh, a tool, a tooling in this. At this point, I'm trying to teach procedural geometry, procedural splat maps. OK, I think those are the key things here. Um, oh, uh, one other key thing on this, uh, don't use black while you're testing, uh, flat black, just because if I have an error in my code, uh, which I literally did have this error before, uh, where I had this one equal to zero. Um, so one of them is getting set to zero. The top one is getting set to zero. That means we won't have a snow cap. We're going to have black. Um, but what happens if I actually had a black texture here? at the, the layer that I, I'm seeing, and I was expecting that I would get black. Or what if I was getting black somewhere else? This would confuse me. I, I would spend a while trying to debug why the black texture was showing up not where I was expecting it to. 
Um, but the black texture in this means literally no layer has been set. Um, one giveaway for it is the fact that there is no shading data. There is no light. Normally, even if you have a black texture in this, uh, you'll still be a the lighting will still have an effect on it. You'll still be able to see something in there. In this case, all shadow is gone. Now on smaller things, like on an edge case, like a peak, it's a little harder to determine if shadow is missing. Um, whereas if we've got a bunch of shape and a lot of it goes away like this, that's a little more easy to tell. Hey, we're, we're missing most all of our definition over here. What just happened there? Uh, I just pressed a button. I think I pressed cap or tab F or something. Oh, I started the game? No. What? The game is not running. Where is everything? Double click the terrain. There we go. Something just happened to my control. That was really weird. Anyway, so I'm zooming in and you can see over here, there is literally no height data. This one changes a little bit because it's got a little bit of the gray rock that was showing up. Um, so if I stand over that, we'll see it again. See, there's a little gray rock peeking through there, but otherwise none of this definition is there. Now, as soon as I start to raise the gray up, you can see that there's actually a lot of definition happening to these spots. Okay. Uh, so black is bad if for this. In this case, we want to use other colors, sort of like you don't want to use a pink uh, or what was it, pink or purple, uh, whatever the shade is that indicates the shader is not showing up. So uh, in this case, black means that the layer is not showing up. Uh, normally for shaders that have errors, pink is where your issue is. Okay, so I'm putting that back to one because that's what I want in there. Okay, now I think I think that's everything here. Uh, let's go ahead and just, uh, was that everything? Is there anything else that I want to walk through on this? Um, no, that's it. I, I'll have other videos if there's, if you guys have other ideas. I think I might be done with the coloring for the most part now. Um, there are other tricks and techniques that I could bring up if people have interest. Um, but also, uh, the next section that I want to get into is actually hiding these squares. Some of these edges are chopping away. Let me hit the stop button. Let's do it now. Oh, and <laughs> it moved right as I was did a sharp change right as soon as I hit now. Um, so over here on the terrain, you see this nicer swoosh. And so you don't really see what's going on as much, how it's this blocky edge and has kind of the square edge because it gradually drops down. Um, over here, we certainly have an issue. You see these teeth coming out, and I want to get, help get rid of that. On this side, we don't really have it because there's a slice going through it. And there's other things we can do, but I, I don't want to get too much into that topic right now, but that's another area that I'm planning on heading into in the near future. All right, I hope you found this valuable. Um, let me know what you think, uh, particularly if there are ideas that you have on other ways of dealing with terrain, um, if other approaches you've used that have been successful, um, performance gains that I might have. Um, so far, I'm not taking advantage of the GPU. I'm not taking advantage of, uh, process of separate threads. Um, so I'm cutting out a lot in here. Uh, I could certainly do a lot to increase the performance. Um, but some of the functionality, just in my approach, what I chose to make a particular layer happen or an edit happen. I want this stuff to happen in real time, but maybe I could be doing this in a higher resolution. Anyway, I'd love to hear your feedback, uh, what you think of this, and how this could continue to be useful for you. All right, thanks.